Hello, boys and girls. Today's Monday, March 30th. I hope you had a good spring break. You're officially back to school, even though I know this is homeschooling. So I hope you've taken some time today to do Zern, Prodigy, and your studies weekly. Some of what I'm going to be assigning for next week is going to be review uh, in your English language arts, so you don't need to focus on that as much this week, but read a book for pleasure. And when you have some free time, I hope you're taking a chance to listen to my story from The Little House in the Big Woods, and this is going to be Chapter 6, and the title is Two Big Bears. Then one day Pa said that spring was coming. In the big woods, the snow was beginning to thaw. Bits of it dropped from the branches of the trees and made little holes in the softening snowbanks below. At noon, all the big icicles along the eaves of the little house quivered and sparkled in the sunshine. The drops of water hung tumbling at their tips. Pa said he must go to town to trade the furs of the wild animals he'd been trapping all winter. So one evening, he made a big bundle of them. There were so many furs that when they were packed tightly and tied together, they made a bundle almost as big as Pa himself. Very early one morning, Pa strapped the bundle of furs on his shoulders and started to walk to town. There were so many furs to carry that he could not take his gun. Ma was worried, but Pa said that by starting before sun up and walking very fast all day, he could get home before dark. The nearest town was far away. Laura and Mary had never seen a town. They had never seen a store. They had never even seen two houses standing together. But they knew in the town there were many houses and a store full of candy and calico fabric and all kinds of other wonderful things, powder and shot and salt and some store sugar. They knew that Pa would trade his furs to the storekeeper for beautiful things from town. And all day they were expecting the presents he would be bringing home. Then the sun sank low above the treetops and no more drops fell from the tips of the icicles and they began to watch eagerly for Pa. The sun sank out of sight and the woods grew dark and he did not come. Ma started supper and set the table, but still he did not come. It was time to do chores, and still he had not come. Ma said that Laura might come with her while she milked the cow. Laura could carry the lantern. So Laura put on her coat, and Ma buttoned it. And Laura, Laura put her hands into her red mittens that hung by the red yarn string around her neck, while Ma lit the candle in the lantern. Laura was proud to be helping Ma with the milking, and she carried the lantern very carefully. Its sides were of tin, and in places cut, with places cut in them for the candlelight to shine through. When Laura walked behind Ma to the, on the path to the barn, little bits of candlelight from the lantern leapt all about her in the snow. The night was not quite dark. The woods were dark, but there was a gray light on the snowy path, and in the sky there were a few faint stars. The stars did not look as warm and bright as the little lights that came from her lantern. Laura was surprised to see the dark shape of Suki, the brown cow, standing in the barnyard gate. Ma was surprised too. It was too early in the spring for Suki to be let out in the, of, in the big woods to eat grass. She lived in the barn. But sometimes on warm days, Pa left her out in her stall open so she could come into the barnyard. Now Ma and Laura saw behind the bars waiting for them. Ma went up to the gate and pushed against it to open it. But it did not open very far because there was Suki standing against it. Ma said, Suki, get over. She reached across the gate and slapped Suki's shoulder. Just then, of the dancing little bits of light from the lantern jumped between the bars of the gate and Laura saw a long shaggy black fur, two little glittery eyes. Suki had thin, short, brown hair. Suki had large, gentle eyes. Ma said, Laura, walk back to the house. So Laura turned around and began to walk towards the house. Ma came behind her. Here's a picture. Uh-oh, what did they find? It wasn't Suki. 
Ma snatched her up, lantern and all, and ran. Ma ran with her into the house and slammed the door. Then Laura said, Ma, was it a bear? Yes, Laura, Ma said, it was a bear. Laura began to cry. She hung on to Ma and sobbed. Oh, will he eat Suki? No, Ma said, hugging her. Suki is safe in the barn. Think, Laura, all those big heavy logs and the in the barn walls and the door is heavy and solid made to keep bears out. No, the bear cannot get in to eat Suki. Laura felt better then, but he could have hurt us, couldn't he? She said. He didn't hurt us, Ma said, and you're a good girl, Laura, to do exactly what I told you to do and to do it so quickly without asking why. Ma was trembling and she began to laugh a little too. Think, she said, I've slapped a bear. Then she put supper on the table for Laura and Mary and Pa had not yet come. He didn't come. Laura and Mary were undressed and they said their prayers and they snuggled into their trundle bed. Ma sat by the lamp, mending one of Pa's shirts. The house seemed cold and still and strange without Pa. Laura listened to the wind in the big woods. All around the house, the wind kept, went crying as though it were lost in the dark with the cold. The wind sounded frightened. Ma finished mending the shirt. Laura saw her fold it slowly and carefully. She smoothed it with her hand. Then she did a thing that she had never done before. She went to the door and she pulled the leather latch string through its hole in the door so that nobody could get in from outside unless she lifted the latch. She came and took Carrie, all limp and sleeping, out of her big bed. She saw that Laura and Mary were still awake. And she said to them, go to sleep, girls. Everything is all right. Pa will be here in the morning. Then she went back to her rocking chair and she sat there rocking gently and holding baby Carrie in her arms. She was sitting up late waiting for Pa and Laura and Mary meant to stay awake too till he came. But at last they were asleep. In the morning, Pa was there. He had brought candy for Laura and Mary and two pieces of pretty calico fabric to make them each a dress. Mary's was china blue pattern on a white background and Laura's was dark red with little golden brown dots on it. Ma had a calico dress, calico for a dress too. It was brown with big feathery white pattern all over it. They were all happy because Pa had got such good prices for his fur that he could afford to get them each beautiful presents. The tracks of the big bear were all around the barn, and there were marks of his claws on the walls, but Suki and the horses were safe inside. All that day the sun shone, and the snow melted, and the little streams of water ran from the icicles, which all the time grew thinner. Before the sun set that night, the bear tracks were only shapeless marks in the wet, soft snow. After supper, Pa took Laura and Mary on his knees, and he said he had a new story to tell them. The new story was the story of Pa and the bear in the way. When I went to town yesterday with the furs, I found it hard walking in the soft snow. It took me a long time to get to town, and the other man, men with furs had come in earlier to do their trading. The storekeeper was busy, and I had to wait until he could look at my furs. Then we had to bargain about the price of each one, and then I had to pick out things I wanted to take in trade. Ooh, that's like bartering. Do you remember when we read the story about bartering? So it was nearly sundown when I could start home. I tried to hurry, <clears throat> but the walking was hard and I was tired, and I had not gone far before night came. And, at, and I was alone in the big woods without my gun. There were still six miles to walk, and I came along as fast as I could. The night grew darker and darker, and I wished for my gun because I knew that some of the bears had come out of their winter den. And I'd seen their tracks when I went to town in the morning. Bears are hungry and cross at this time of year. You know, they've been sleeping in their dens all winter with nothing to eat, and that makes them thin and angry when they wake up. I did not want to meet one. I hurried along as quick as I could in the dark. By and by, the stars gave me a little light, and it was still black as pitch where the woods were thick. 
but in the open places I could see dimly and I could see the snowy road ahead a little way and I could see the dark woods standing all around me. I was glad when I came into the open place where the stars gave me this faint light. All the time I was watching as well as I could for bears. I was listening for the sounds they make when they go carelessly through the bushes. Then I came again into my open place. There, right in the middle of my road, I saw a big black bear. He was trade standing up on his hind legs looking at me. I could see his eyes shine. I could see his pig snout. I could see one of his claws in the starlight. My scalp prickled and my hair stood straight up. I stopped in my tracks and I stood still. The bear did not move. There he stood looking at me. I knew it would do no good to try and go around him. He would follow me into the dark woods where he could see better than I could and I did not want to fight a winter starved bear in the dark. Oh, how I wished for my gun. I had to pass that bear to get home. I thought that if I could scare him, he might get out of the road and let me go. So I took a deep breath and suddenly I shouted with all my might and I ran at him waving my arms. He didn't move, he didn't run very far far toward him, I tell you. I stopped and I looked at him and he stood looking at me and then I shouted again and there he stood. I kept on shouting and waving my arms, but he didn't budge. Well, it would do me no good to run away. There were other bears in the woods and I might meet any one any time. I might as well deal with this one as with another. Besides, I was coming home to Ma and you girls. I would never get here if I ran away from everything in the woods that scared me. So at last, I looked around and I got a good club and a solid heavy branch that had been broken from a tree by the weight of the snow in the winter. I lifted it up in my hands and I ran straight at that bear and I swung my club as hard as I could. And I brought it down, bang, on his head. And there he stood, for he was nothing but a big black burned stump. I had passed it on my way to town that morning. It wasn't a bear at all. I only thought it was a bear because I had been thinking all the time about bears and being afraid I might meet one. It really wasn't a bear at all, Mary asked. No, Mary, it wasn't a bear at all. There I had been yelling and dancing and waving my arms all by myself in the big woods trying to scare a stump. Laura said, ours was really a bear, but we were not scared because we thought it was Suki. Pa did not say anything, but he hugged her tighter. Ooh, that bear might have eaten Ma and me all up, Laura said, snuggling closer to him. But Ma walked right up to him and slapped him. And he didn't do anything at all. Why didn't he do anything? I guess he was too surprised to do anything, Laura said, Pa said. I guess he was afraid when the lantern shone in his eyes and when Ma walked up to him and slapped him. He knew she wasn't afraid. Well, you are brave too, Laura said. Even if it was only a stump, you thought it was a bear. You'd have hit him in the head with that club if he would had been a bear, wouldn't you, Pa? Yes, said Pa, I would. You see, I had to. Then Ma said it was bedtime. She helped Laura and Mary get ready for bed. And say, they knelt down by their trundle, trundle bed and said their prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Ma kissed them both and tucked the covers in around them. They lay there a while looking at Ma's smooth parted hair with her hands busy sewing in the lamplight. Her needle made little clicking sounds around her thimble and then the thread went softly swish through the pretty calico that Pa had traded for the fur. Laura looked at Pa, who was greasing his boots, his mustache and his hair, and his long brown beard were silky in the lamplight with the colors of his plaid jacket. He whistled cheerfully while he worked, and then he sang. It was a warm night, and the fire had gone to coals in the hearth, and Pa did not build it up. All around the house in the big woods, there were little sounds of falling snow, and from the eaves, there was a little drip, drip, drip of the melting icicles. It was just a little while the trees would be putting on their baby leaves with rosy and yellow and pale green, and there would be wildflowers and birds in the woods. Then... 
There would be no more stories by the fire at night, but all day long, Laura and Mary would run and play among the trees, for it would soon be spring. Well, I want to remind you that every day can be a great day and the choice is up to you, so make it a good day.